on this. All right, are you guys ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were. Okay, ready? Amazing. Uh, Mike. On this episode of. Oh, wait. <laughs> the new original Lifetime movie. Oh, how should I say it? Lifetime original movie? The new Lifetime original movie. <laughs> Daddy O. No, okay, wait, wait, wait. The first thing you should say is when it's gonna come out and be like this <laughs> October. Okay, or that's something. That's or that's like, wait, what, what date is this gonna, gonna come out? This episode's gonna come out yeah. on. Uh, he, what, we'll go the other way. Peaches date? will go first. Coming this October 14th on Lifetime. Daniel Patio, the original movie. Fuck, get down! My dad is my lover. He's not gonna make it. Goddamn eagles have been staring at me from the skies for too long. I'm just a phone call away. <laughs> Don't die, daddy -o. Okay, okay, hold on. Right here, Andy, is where the theme song's gonna go. <laughs> theme, song, theme song's like 20 minutes long. Yes, we don't have to record that all night. Yeah. It's, got, it's got like a four minute bass solo. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's got your jazz solo that you uh, improv on the chaos later at Chelsea's house. Dude, that was, <laughs> that was on my birthday, dude. I was infused with, with light from my own birth. That was amazing. Five years ago. Okay, <laughs> now now it's now, begun. fuck your birth. It's my turn to be born. Where every every twenty five years, you get one beautiful jazz solo. Like that's how it works. <laughs> oh, like yeah. that's how jazz careers work. Dude, yeah, I'm We're shooting for four. About that's what Miles Davis is so good. We're <laughs> talking about things we've hallucinated. Does anybody have a good one? Because I have one on the top of my head. But I only have one. Hey, shoot. One time I took cocaine and I got crazy. Oh, oh stealing whoa. my soul. Oh, now. All right, all right let's uh, not steal people's stories, all right? Uh, uh, you know, I, I can start it. Talking about... Wait, do you know what I'm talking about, Andy? This guy doesn't uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, Colin, you have a hallucination story? Yes, okay, so I was so sick and so feverish one time. It was here, actually. I just oh, we already, heard, we already said this one. Did we really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you talked about Aragorn coming out of your closet. And he Let was me like, just say it again. Right, I'm not. Okay. Hey, but this time play Lord uh, of the Rings music as he tells it. And dream sequence, too. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> I was, uh, <laughs> I was so sick. I was like, I don't know what was going on. I have no idea. I just felt immediately sick. I was sweating it through my, like, clothes that I was wearing and stuff. And I woke up. And I saw Aragorn from Lord of the Rings stare at me at the foot of my bed. And I, like, was looking at him right in the eyes. And I, like, was... In my head, I was still sane enough. Even though I was, like, insane enough to see a person there. I was sane enough to be, like, that's not real. That's not going to happen. Like, this isn't really happening. And I looked him in the eyes enough. But, uh... Eventually, he just faded into my closet and just became my clothes. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I knew that that wasn't real. And then I just went back to sleep, and then everything was fine. But uh, I still have a soaking wet bed, like, from just the sweat. sweat. Yeah, oh, it was gross. Oh, damn. Dude. You probably just wore them. You probably just put them on your back like a cape and didn't even notice the next day. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's blood everywhere, and I woke up. <laughs> I kind of touched on this one earlier with Lance, but have you ever, like, been up for so long that you start getting delusional? Or, Fuck like, yeah, man. Or, like, yeah, like, things that have patterns also have movements. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Fucked. I think my whole uh, career at community college was just a hallucination because I never uh, really slept. So, uh, everything, Dude. I, all those college algebra classes, uh, it was all just a lie. Yeah, no. Yeah, no me one... and Andy had uh, college algebra. Uh, and freaking, do we slept, like, two hours a night. We just played, like, regular Nintendo or something and, like, did those horrible math problems that made our temples pulsate. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. And, and the only ones that were on the quiz every time were the only ones we, like, skipped because they were too hard in the homework <laughs> or whatever. And then they'd pass out a quiz as soon as we got there. And it was, like, every one that yeah. we didn't do. Zero. And, dude, I still vividly remember exactly what Lance's alarm clock sounded like, and it's the most horrendous noise in the world. It goes... Dude, if I can find that sound, I'll put it in right there. It was seriously horrible. I'd like hear it in the middle of, like, 
I'd hear it Dude, at like five a.m. and it would then shake like, my your heart. God. Like I remember the day, like one day we were just like, you know what, fuck it, let's not go. And dude, it was like the best fucking feeling, man. I felt like I was on vacation. Like, it's like I just, that episode, it's like the mind you know what's hilarious though America. is the way that that class ended is like, uh, okay, so basically you had to uh, you had to get uh, what was the what was the rule? Like you had to get a B. To, you're gonna, you're gonna to fucking get tell people it? this shit. You're gonna no, 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 I'm gonna tell them. You're, you're gonna, I'm gonna tell, tell them your glorious I know. redemption, though. You're gonna and, tell me them about my demise. <laughs> you, would you rather tell them? No, no, you go ahead. Uh, okay, so you had to get a B in the class for it to count towards your degree or whatever. Like you could pass with a C, or no, it was a C. You had to get a C to move on to the next class. Yeah. Uh, you could get a D, and technically you would pass, but you couldn't go take the next class or whatever. So, like, uh, we stayed up all night, like, listening to the Rocky music and, like, studying and, like, learning all these, like, problems and everything. And, like, we went the next day and, and took the final. And uh, we got it back. And uh, I got, like, a uh, – I, I looked at my, my grade in the class, and I got, like, uh, 70% or something, which is, like, just enough to get a C or something. It was, like, a C-. minus. And I saw it, and I was like, yes, I passed. I got a C. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. I was, like, celebrating with, like, tears of joy. And then Lance, like, opened his, and he got, like, a 69.5. It was, like, 69.5. Dude, we're going to go to that class four days a week, early in the morning, listen to that stupid bitch tell us about shit we're never going to use in our lives. Dude, I was so like, I was so done. Like when I first when I saw it, I was just a corpse. I, my face turned into a corpse, and I was just like, "Yep, okay, I'm uh, I'm done, I'm done." And like, dude, because do you remember how well, stressful? I was like, I had like, do you remember how stressful that semester like, was, dude? Like, we fucking ate Quiznos to like, dude. I got so fat that semester. I just like, my only joy was eating that sandwich at the end of the day. I was like, oh food. yeah, exactly, man. Because I didn't want to think about dude, school yeah. at all. Oh, we went hurt. to fast food restaurants for, for comfort, like, every day. And dude. it was four days a week, so we just, like, clogged our arteries with that shit. Four and, days. like, uh, but, dude, like, I had, like, tears of joy in my eyes because I passed it, and I knew I'd never be there again. And then Lance, like, opened his, <laughs> and he, like, didn't pass it. And I was like, oh, shit, dude, yeah. I'm sorry. But, like, no, I, I didn't know how to remember, feel dude, you, because, like, like me. I was like, dude, my friend's, like, dead. And, like, his, yeah. his life is over. But, like, mine, I just, like... It's like I got let out of jail, and then Lance was still there, yeah, like I took behind, the and I was you, just man. like galloping away. <laughs> dude, <laughs> like, it, I didn't know how to feel, dude. There's <laughs> a happy ending to this, though. I fucking crank called the stupid demon yeah, okay. teacher of ours. I called her. What dude, about, what yeah. <laughs> One night we got drunk on Lance's uh, on his back patio at his parents' house. We were sitting out back, like just drunk on his like swing set or, or his like uh, his uh, porch swing or whatever. And uh, we were talking about how shitty that class was. And I was like, you know, I still have uh, our teacher's number. And he was like, give me it. <laughs> so I gave I gave him the teacher's phone number. And he called it. And it was like the middle of the night. So, of course, she didn't answer. And uh, he went on, like, her voicemail. And he even said, didn't you even say your full name? You said, this is Lance Vogel. <laughs> and that you failed me. He was like, you failed me uh, from your college algebra class at Merrimack. And uh, I never got over it or something. And then the, I still remember, I don't remember what you said totally, but I remember the last thing you said to her on the phone is you go, I hate you with everything I got. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't think I said my full name. Like, I, like, yeah. disguised my voice and everything. Because it was only, like, a year yeah. after, which you probably you still remember me. definitely said Lance. You said Lance. Well, but, fuck. Uh, uh, yeah. the shit. Dude, uh... He no, yeah, I, I, well, I acted like a normal student. I was like, yeah, yeah, I've been having trouble with this math. I'm just kidding, you stupid bitch. I hate you. Like, <laughs> yeah, I hate her so much. Man. I just want to grab her stupid head and shake it until she's lifeless like a bird. <laughs> her, her, her bird neck just flops to the side because she had a heart attack. That's what I wanted. I, that was like my greatest dream. Like, I hated that lady. He, dude. Told, her, he told her, like, in a drunken rage on the phone that he hated her with everything he's got. <laughs> Every like, one of my cells dude, and <laughs> hated her. Dude, oh my good she job. She probably gets that like dude, oh, I hope she I hope she listened to the whole message and it just sank into her dark soul. But anyway, <laughs> I, hey, I'm all over that now. Okay, I'm okay now. Dude, dude. But what's extra funny about that was like we used to uh we used to carpool to that class four days a week. And uh, speaking of, like, hallucinations and ridiculous experiences, like, 
uh, we had to drive across the train track every single day to get to that class. And uh, there was one day when uh, I think it was Lance was driving and we were driving to class and we had to go across these train tracks that we went across every day. But like for some reason this day, they had like a car stopped on the train tracks that was like fixing it or something like that. And so the uh, <laughs> the gates went up and we were going over the train tracks and both of us at the same time out of the corner of our eyes saw like this tr- this uh, this car on the train tracks that was like moving just slightly. And so we both thought that it was a train coming and Lance and I at the same time like we seriously we heard each other's death screams. Yes. It was like the most ridiculous things. Like <laughs> we thought- I know exactly what. We I know we the last dead. sounds that are going to come out of Lance when he, <laughs> when he dies. Like, Dude, and what was so funny like, about it is we were, we were like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what was so funny about is we were like just talking normally like yeah I don't I don't understand how that you do that problem and he, yeah! I'm like the freaking trains are right there it's just like dude it was too much like it was right there there's no way I could have like accelerated my car or reversed in time it, we, we were done for like it's like that video of uh it's that video of the praying mantis jumping oh, oh, yeah. dude, dude you should put that audio uh, you should put that audio in from the yeah if you want to hear my death screen look at the video of me with a praying mantis yeah the freaking thing. <laughs> Just watch it. Dude, or- Andy, remember that uh remember when that praying mantis like landed on your finger? Dude, that's amazing. Oh yeah, dude. I was uh I was talking to like a group of people uh outside of Elizabeth's house and I was like telling a story or something. I had like my hands out and a praying mantis came down and like perched on my finger like while I was telling the story, like <laughs> at the most like epic part. Like, I was, like, saying something, like, super epic, and this, uh, this praying man just flew down from the sky and just perched on my finger. It was oh ridiculous. My God. It was so it was funny. Most Dude, I was sitting on my porch one time, <laughs> and so one freaking sick. landed on my shoulder, and I did oh. not take it very lightly at all like that. I just like, Dude, freaked any, out. Yeah. flicked I mean, it on the ground, and then saw that it was a praying mantis. No, any I, bug I just, that can turn its head, like, it has, like, a neck, and eats its prey face first alive <laughs> is evil. There's no, like... It belongs with Satan. Dude, they look evil, too. Yeah, they, they have pupils. They can, like, turn I want, like, head. A, I want a life-size praying mantis that's a bodyguard for me. Oh, my God. Oh, they'd be the coolest God. bodyguard ever. I'd be like, oh, oh <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to my bodyguard Francis. <laughs> Dude. Francis comes up and's like, hey, you got a problem? No. no Francis no, no, no. the mantis. Dude, it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's the mantis. a giant insect. It's the scariest thing ever. Because there's no, like... There's no hesitation. If somebody's coming at you, he, he's, he's on the killer. I mean, he picks him up off the ground and eats his face and immediately. There's no emotion. Just drops his like, horse. It's like, no like a praying mantis wearing like, sunglasses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a nice track. There's no, there's no feelings in a bug's little shriveled heart. Like, they just don't care. They no, don't care guy, about anything. This guy cares about me. I feed him crickets every day. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that is so. Who feeds your crickets, dude? He's like, <laughs> he can't he's open the jar. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm totally like, do that. <sighs> he's like talking about. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So we're ladies. talking about. We're t- he's talking about other praying mantis we're- ladies he wants to bang. And like normally, like guys, like, oh, dude, you don't want that. You don't want a long term relationship. Trust me. It's like, dude, you seriously don't want that. It'll, she'll rip your head right off your body. Right off. Like, <laughs> you don't want that. Don't they all? Dude, so we're talking about bugs and we're talking about hallucinations, and uh, this ties in perfectly to the very uh, probably first thing I can remember that yeah, I'm not funny. sure actually happened. But uh, when I was a kid, I was sitting out on the driveway with my mom, and I swear I saw like a bee. It was, it looked like a scribbly drawing fly into our garage, and I told my mom that, and I we like went in there looking for it, and my mom was like. She knew that it totally didn't happen, and I guess she maybe thought I was just, like, playing some weird game. But I really honestly still to this day remember what it looked like, and I believe that this, like, hand-drawn giant bumblebee flew into my garage. And it's probably still there haunting whoever lives in my childhood house now. Dude, that's crazy. It was probably real. And also, I remember when I was a little kid, I used to take baths, like, in the tub. And I used to believe that one of my kneecaps had, like, a hinge, like a door, and it would open up, and you could look inside, and it was, like, an empty wood cavern, and you could store, like, little barrels of root beer and candy in there and stuff. Like, <laughs> I honestly believed that. Dude. That's not true. And, uh, I don't know if you still think that, but it's not real. You don't know that? Dude. You could have a wooden leg. No, it, it is, know, man. dude. Dude, when, you, when your young like, mind uh, is, like, still, like, like, painting the world around you, like... 
dude, who knows if it's like capturing real, like the real reality? Because I mean, dude, we all have different perceptions. You know what I mean? Like, we were, we're all. What is it? Uh, the, 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 the world is a world of difference from. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the line. Dear fucking god! It's but it's like a terrible one. We all have different perspectives, and who knows if a kid's like seeing reality. Remember five goes west before we make our own assumptions. Let's talk about five goes west. FIFO goes west. Let's talk about your story. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, please. Cocaine story. Yeah, speaking of hallucinations, uh, yeah, Lance, uh, tell us about the last time you... It's a long life. story. Get into your chair and sit there. By the way, FIFO goes west <laughs> is entirely 100% my hallucination. If you've seen it, that's I used to watch it at the Lake of the Ozarks with my cousins all the time. But, uh, well, it was my hallucination you saw. Oh. <laughs> it was Calum's mind. Changes mine's everything. Here are hallucinations. Okay, so let me let me set this up. I'm like you can kind of see like what led to it. Uh, I, I had been freaking tailgating with my older brother like the whole freaking day at uh, Mizzou. Probably drank like 30 beers throughout the day. The night before we drank, and uh, I had, I had like no sleep already, and uh, drank the whole day. The next like th- these are just some of the things that happened that night. I freaking like. Uh, Freaking, the lights went out, the electricity went out, came back on, my pants were gone. They disappeared into the night. All of them. <laughs> uh, freaking, I peed and somebody, somebody was watching a movie, out, and I just went up to the outside of their house and just peed into their room while they were watching TV. I just peed into the room next to their bed <laughs> while they were watching, while I was watching the movie too. It's like, like <laughs> dude, I didn't care at all. Uh, freaking, and then I punched some guy in the head who was trying to fight my brother. Uh, I freaking puked I, a freaking old faithful burst while playing beer pong. A um, whole bunch of crazy shit. Anyway, it led to me being in this like this group of people. Uh, freaking, I don't know who they were. Like just these people. Like they're all like, "Hey, yeah, uh, you want to go do some blow?" I'm like, "What?" Like, uh, you, you, you just come come on. You want to say some fun or whatever? I'm like, I'm drunk. I'm out of my mind. I'm like, all right, fuck, it, let's go. Uh, so we go up to like their apartment or whatever, and they they break out the cocaine and freaking we snort a couple lines and uh, holy god, I it, it was crazy. Like I mean, it's it's just that that feeling of just like it's such a rush, and you're like I don't know if you, any of you guys have ever done cocaine, but <laughs> it's nope. it's such like a, a adrenaline rush. It's it's just like flowing through your body like so fast. You feel like in your chest and stuff, and you're just like. It's insane. It's such a crazy high. Your teeth are chattering. It's fucking crazy. It's great. I can't wait to do it. Yeah, man. Uh, anyway, freaking. So we got done doing that. Like I didn't. I didn't pay a dime for it either. Uh, one dime. One dime. It's all or a nickel. Yeah. Anyway, Nine so I do all that, and then uh, I remember snorting some other stuff too. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't cocaine. Wait, 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 wait. It was wait. Like heroin. Wait. Like, yes. You no. can't. You can't just say that this was all because of cocaine and be like. Oh yeah. No, also, I remember it was like it, other it, weird shit. It, it was like a marker. It was but a it, comet cleaner. It was like a marker, but it was like made for like snorting. Or I don't know if it was made for it, but these guys had it and snorted that. <laughs> so I was just out of my fucking wait, mind. Wait, wait, dude, I'm starting to think that uh, you snorted something else. Like, that, maybe, maybe I did. You, uh, maybe I did. It was dude, like one of those there are markers. probably corpses in Mizzou because of me. <laughs> that I just left it, there. Like cocaine's not supposed to make you hallucinate. It just no, no, no. You, uh, just. I don't think it was. The, I think it was a mixture. Anyway, the next day, oh, it begins. It begins. I wake up on the couch in a haze, just like, God damn, I did cocaine last night. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. So, fucking... Is that fat body? No, it's my friend. Oh. She's gonna go pee. Okay. <laughs> All right, friend. Um, just gotta pee. Anyway. Freaking... So, I get... So, I, we do the whole ride home. I'm feeling fine and stuff, and, like, everything's going great. Uh... I get home and my parents are having like a relative party, like we're like all like our relatives, oh like God. like our relatives are over and they're all like eating and stuff. And <laughs> I'm like, hey guys, hey, hey, hey. they like had no idea what I did the whole weekend. I uh, I get into the massage chair. Hey, how you doing? And uh, I sit Welcome. in the massage chair. And I'm talking to my cousins, just kind of just sitting there. And I close my eyes and I see this fucking old lady. With her gooey lips, she had long anteater. Eater, she had like anteater gooey lips, but she had like sharp teeth in those gooey lips. And uh, she's like kissing my face up close. She's like right up in my face. I can feel like that presence, that like electricity of like somebody's face close to mine. And I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? And like freaking, I'm like, 
I didn't. I mean, I didn't even like say. I didn't tell anybody about that. I was just like, "Whoa, what the hell!" Uh, <laughs> and then freaking, I, I like, I was just like, oh, "God." <laughs> so we, uh, and then I go out and I, like, I start hanging out with like my cousins and stuff. And then like towards the end of the party, people are leaving and stuff. And I just go to my parents' room and I just lay on the bed and uh, just lay on their bed and just laying there. And I have my head like hanging over this the edge of the bed and I'm looking down at the floor and. Uh, all of a sudden, I start seeing like uh, these campers. There's just, like a bunch of, like hippie campers just sitting on the ground, and they're all just kind of talking and stuff. I can hear audibly like a party going on. Like it's not the party out there because there's like two people out there. Like it's like a, it's like a full raging party, and uh, but there's like a few hippies just sitting there and they're all talking and stuff. And then all of a sudden they just stop and they all just look at me at the same time and they just stare at me, and then they just fade away. And, like they all just stop. Like they they noticed me, and I was like, okay, I'm fucking tripping i don't know what the hell's going on i'm dying uh so later on i go into my uh i go into my room and uh i lay on the bed in there and i see my shadow on the wall and uh, i'm laying down my shadow's standing up and uh my shadow (laughs) my shadow fucking starts pointing at me like this over and over again point point point, and then point like it was like uh Um. Please explain that for someone who... Okay, the first points are, like, whipping points, like, like whipping the elbow, pointing at me, and then the other ones are just hinging it's the like, elbow, it's like, It's, like, point, a very point. accusing, like, point. Yeah, like exactly, like, very. You are guilty, guilty, guilty. Yeah, that's what it felt like, too. It felt like, yeah, like, what, what are you doing? Like, uh... You did cocaine. It, cocaine. Dude, who knows if it was, like, <laughs> subconscious. Uh, but, uh, that's what I'm just, like... That's when I know something's up, and I think I'm thinking. It, that's it, when you knew something was up, not when some greasy lips started. That's what it is. Yeah, that's in the middle of your family. That's party. when I just thought that was like I, I thought I was like falling asleep, and that happened. You know what I mean? Like like a little daydream. <laughs> but uh, that when I can see it without clothes, I, I saw that without closing my eyes. Like my eyes were fully open when I saw that, and I knew that like I was seeing it. It wasn't like a, I don't know. It was crazy. But uh, anyway, freaking. It was all dandy, and, and then all of a sudden, fucking night comes, and I start seeing goddamn demons out of the corners of my eyes everywhere. <laughs> I'm so fucking paranoid. Like, everywhere, every corner I see, there's just a face right there. There's just a fucking demon over there. It's fucking yellow eyes. It's got a frog face. It's like every demon you can imagine. And I'm just like, okay, you're, you're, you're going a little crazy. Just fucking calm down. You need to... It's just some. It just you know it'll pass through your system, and uh, I fucking uh, I go to the movies with some friends. Wait, after all of this, you still watch the movies? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I went to the movies with some friends, and uh, I don't I don't even remember what we saw. Wait, 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 what movie? What, I was just gonna say what movie was. I would have to. I would have. Oh, sorry. I would have to see what. I, I don't. I'd have to ask them, uh, but they probably won't remember. You really um, say the whole thing. I don't think I was concentrating on the movie like at all. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, you, you probably just sat in an empty room. <laughs> anyway, alone during. And like, thought you were in the movie theater. <laughs> during, during the movie, I went to the bathroom by myself and like was taking a piss in the urinal and freaking. Uh, there's nobody else in the bathroom and I just see my older brother's face and his face is like. Uh, it's like his forehead's pressed up against my forehead, and his eyes are like a centimeter from mine, but he's kind of tilted. So I'm like face to face with my brother. He's like a mirror image of me. Like it's like I'm pushing my forehead against the mirror, but it's my older brother who's like in, on the other side. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, I guess we got to call her. Oh, we only did. They hung up. Okay. Keep Fuck him. Keep going. Um, so anyway, uh, finish the movies, go home. Or start going home, and I'm driving in the car. And I'm taking Heinz, and Heinz you is were a, driving too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not drunk or anything. I'm just like I'm just seeing shit. You're just, you're just out of your mind. Yeah. yeah, that's like worse though. Like you don't like you couldn't even like yeah, driving while drunk. hallucinating is hey, like. <laughs> I was at an age where I wasn't making good decisions. Okay, I fucking you, you heard what I did before. <laughs> it was like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, freaking. It was this past weekend. So I'm driving down Heinz, and obviously Heinz is a dark road, and there's like no other cars, and. uh well, I'm just staring straight into my passenger seat. There's somebody sitting next to me just staring at me. They're just, they're just staring right at me. And I'm just like, I'm just focusing forward, just watching the road and stuff. But I can like feel their presence just like right next to me, just sitting there while I'm going on heights. I'm just like thinking like, I just, it's, it's insane. I, I'm gonna, I've said that so many fucking times. It's been ridiculous or it's crazy, but that's what it was. The whole thing was fucking crazy and ridiculous. Uh, you ready? I get a caller. Yeah. All right. Before we'll take we a pause. That, like put that, uh. Put that um, Dave Chappelle, no, Rick James quote in there. 
Which one's that? All right, here you go. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I hate that shit. All right, go ahead. Okay, caller, you're on. All right, this is Slavery and Lincoln. It's Slavery oh, and Lincoln. Oh, shit. Slavery and Lincoln. Now we got your number. Oh, must be hallucinating. Yep. Hey, what is going on? There's shit. Giving us the social. Fuck yeah, man. Well, yeah, that's going to be one of the bleeds. Yes, we are. Tell us about your hallucinations, uh, Slam Ram. Uh, so, uh, once, whenever I was going to SIUE, we, we took uh, some, smoked a little bit of DMT, which I believe the technical term is dimethyltryptamine. Super hardcore. Yes, yes. Went for some, it, it's nasty stuff. And uh, went for a walk around, like, the nature, little trails and dealio. Ended up in a tunnel. <laughs> like, a little walkway on me thing. And, like, I don't know a hobbit hole. One of my friends proclaims that it was a hobbit hole. And then it all started shrinking around us. A hobbit hole? People that were shrinking around us. We have no idea what was going on. Well, you guys were in the Shire? <laughs> 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 yeah, I wish it was. It was, uh, it was, it was like in Edwards Hill. Mordor version of Shire. Was hell right. Dude, like, no, you, no. usually when people do, like, DMT, don't they just, like, usually just lay down, but you, like, actually walked around yeah, and stuff on how DMT? Is that possible, yeah, because, I don't know, we were, like, walking out of, like, the cafeteria area, and then, like, somebody was like, hey, I got some of the stuff, you want to smoke it? And we were like, sure. And then oh, after we picked God, like, dude. it, he told us what it was, and we had heard about it before. Surprise. And then we were just trying to get back to, like, the residential hall as quickly as we could. But, I don't know, we stayed out walking around in the woods. I mean, the trip only lasts, like, 15 minutes, like, the hardcore we were spending. But I think we were out there for, like, three hours, just walking around giggling and laughing. <laughs> screaming at each other. At one point, there was an owl who I swear was wearing a cloak. Yeah. He started speaking to me in Latin, and I understood everything that he was trying to say to me, and I was just nodding and agreeing. <laughs> and he opened his cloak, and inside was just the cosmos and all knowledge of the universe. I was trying to write it down on my phone, and I dropped my phone in the woods. <laughs> and <laughs> it took until the next morning for us to go out there and find it. Dude, somebody's going to find that. Some hiker's going to pick that up and find the answers to the universe just on your phone. It's gonna make his eyes roll back in his head. Get Subway. I needed to know that information. B B B G G four nine six. Dude, that's fucking crazy, man. So Slammer, tell 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 us about uh, tell us about yourself. Who are you? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? This is just all fucking. Dude, Slammer is just the hallucination of ours. Man. I know, dude. We're not. Uh, the phone's not even on the table. He's not even talking to us right now. It's all in our head. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you at? This lady's pumped her pump and not even speak to her. Look her in the eyes because of all the form I shouldn't do. Dude, I'm still kind of blown away that you were able to like walk and function off DMT. I have never been able yeah, to. Yeah, doesn't do it like that. rip you out of like reality? Oh, yeah. My God. I'm the first time I, I didn't know what I was in for, so we were just going with the flow. The second time, I definitely I was in like a dimly lit area all by myself, had some calm music on, and was ready for the experience. Man. But, uh, uh, shout out to Colin, uh, Brandon doing for the comic the other night. Yeah, well, well let's talk about that. I met some of him. Is that where you got the picture of his face or whatever? Yeah, I know his identity. You know his identity, but you don't know like, who he is, right? Pretty slick. Yeah. You could pick him out of the lineup. <laughs> Dude. You'll never, you'll never find me. Dude, he said you had freaking, uh, you, had, you, had, you. you had horizontal goat eyes. Horizontal. <laughs> 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 Alright, man. Well, uh, thanks for calling in, man. You're always welcome to call don't back. Don't hey, please come in the show, uh, but yeah. wear, wear a mask and park far yeah. away. It's, so, hey, like, it's, it's, ho- it's Halloween. Go to, like, fucking Johnny Brock's or something. Get a get a Abraham Lincoln mask and join us. Yeah, but what if anybody does this and they try to kill us? We'll, we'll do this. We'll, uh, if we'll waterboard them. If anyone the show, they want to kill us from only this, like, that's fair. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. We had a good run. <laughs> 20 weeks. 20 weeks. 20 weeks. 19, yeah, this is our 20th episode. So. But our 19th week. But our 19th week. So. Yippee. Whoa, is there a five year old talking? What is going on? What? 
I don't know, I just feel like a five year old talking. I don't know, we're gonna tell you right. go, alright? <clears throat> There's some weird shit happening. So. But Slammer right. Ham, we love you. Yeah. Hope you got two. I'll finally be Mundell after um, six missed attempts. I don't know what you said, but he, that he, like said, he said done? after his six missed attempts of the oh, show. Oh, you're on forever. Dude, you finally got on in the 20th Goodbye. episode, man. We love you. Take it easy. We'll <laughs> see you on the other side. I thought you said something about Montel Williams. All right. Hey, uh, okay, here we go. We're back. Okay, so there are more, like, hallucination yes. stories? Or? I'm, 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 like, I'm dry. I just got home uh, from the movie theater. Hallucinating. Yeah, I'm still in my oh, hallucination. Yeah, finish yours. So I get home. And I'm still seeing demons and shit out of the corner of my eye. I'm just trying to make food and shit and <laughs> seeing them. Like, everywhere there's darkness, I can see something standing there. Like, it's just there. Uh, but, dude, the climax was definitely when I got in my bed and like, tried to go to sleep. I was just laying in bed, and I fucking just rolled over, and I looked at my mirror, and there was a girl in a white dress oh hanging God. from my ceiling. Like, her body was pressed up against the ceiling, and she's just looking at me. Like, she's in, like, a wedding dress, and there, or, like, got, or, like, the dress is just hanging down, but she's, like, stuck to the ceiling. She's just looking at me, and, like, I'm laying in bed about to go to sleep. Like, how the <laughs> fuck am I going to go to sleep after seeing that? <laughs> so I fucking just fucking put on some music and then uh, just roll my stomach and fall asleep in my face and... Uh, Wake up and I'm done. And you're normal again. Yeah. So I don't you think. Just went, I don't think I. Did uh, you have fear though that, that that would keep happening? Like when you woke obviously. Up, like, I mean, you, you don't know what. I mean, I didn't know what I did the night before. Like I don't know if I did something that actually fucked up my brain for good. You ever asked like what? No, dude. I what was just going girl with the flow. Still in your room, but no, like, I mean, you like, can't see her. Like you know what I mean? I mean, he doesn't have to deal with it now. Just well, she, she, she's she there. traveled. Dude, dude, if I see her now, I'll freaking oh, curb stomp her. You didn't like it. <laughs> who are what the if people she's that you did it with? In the first place? I don't know the people I did it with. <laughs> they were just random. Randoms. This is a, hu- a huge party. I ended up with a small group of randoms <laughs> doing coke. Well, I, don't, I, don't guys... think it was, I don't think it was the co- I don't think it was the coke that did it. I think I, I slept like three hours. No, I think it was the other stuff. <laughs> Don't know what the I, yeah, was. you said you like snorted a marker or something. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I feel like it was mainly sleep it was deprivation. Like, it was like a ground up sharpie, dude. I thought it was like meth at first. I thought I smoked like meth or something. Like, I do. Like, you can't sick. even blame the shit on coke, man. Like you said, you did it. You said you did a marker also. Like, yeah. how, like, Wait, you sipped a marker too? Yeah. Afterwards, I was just going all out, man. I was just like, Fuck. What's wrong I mean, with if you? Were to do one Dude, marker, so, I'll just do my so you went to a party. You went to a party and ended up with a small group of people snorting markers. Yeah. <laughs> snorting marker and then you hallucinated for days. I guess. Dude, yes, I was with some this marker was. Dude, uh, I remember there was, like, some, like, Indian guy that was, like, like, he was the only one who, who was actually, uh, he was, like, my, my brother's friend, and he's the only one I kind of recognized and stuff, and, uh, kind of, like, I remember we went to, like, the, we went to an ATM with the people, they were, like, doing this shit, they were, like, selling the coke, and they were, like, selling to these guys and buying it and stuff, so we went, like, went to an ATM, and they left us in the car, and me and the guy were just, like, did we just do that shit for free? Did we just get all that for free? He's like, yeah, man. We get back to the house where, like, the freaking marker shit's going on. And I remember, like, I remember them, like, freaking starting to, like, I, I feel like they, like, fucking killed that guy or something. Or, like, they, like, <laughs> something happened. Something happened where that guy was, like, they, like, hated him all of a sudden. The and guy I, that sold it to him? No, the Indian to? guy that was, like, with us. Like, I, yeah. I remember, we were, like, they were just, like, instantly, like, like who the fuck is this guy? Like, who, like I'm like, he's a good guy. Like I, I, I he's, and then like that's like the last thing I remember. So I don't remember what happened. So he's dead. He's snorted you... his ashes. So if if a marker is yeah. a really good way to get high, I feel like it's probably the cheapest way to get high. It's me, like I keep saying it's a marker. It's, you can buy a pack might have been like a spray. I wish I. I mean, to be honest, it. though, like that doesn't sound like a good, good high to be high for like days, seeing demons and driving around with people in your car and that aren't there, and like I, sounds great. That makes me terrified to like mess with markers. Especially, I don't ever want to draw with a sharpie again. Especially like, our I'm apartment. Scared now. Especially our apartment. If you snor- if you get high on that, like you'd see Joe Pesci and Ultimate Warrior and Alexander the Great statues. <laughs> Dude, not just any Alexander the Great. He's got pupils that are like hanging out of oh, his head. Oh, that's right. We put googly eyes inside ass. of his. <laughs> yeah, but face. one's falling out though. Dude, I don't know, man. I that's think... even more terrifying. Yeah, where did he go? Dude, okay, so like, you guys are talking about how like Lance goes, uh, 
Yeah, I was at a period in my life where I was, like, making bad decisions, like, and you guys are ripping on them for doing coke. I've never done coke in my life until, uh, like, maybe two or three weeks ago. <laughs> So, like, uh, I'm at the In point fact, where I guess I'll make some bad you, decisions. You called me either on coke or right before that you, right before you did Oh, uh, no, I had definitely done coke before I called you. <laughs> I feel like it's, like, 15 minutes of a high and then 15 minutes of talking really fast, but nobody actually has a conversation. Yeah. Well, see, like, it was, uh, it was like that at first, and then I did a shitload more of it, and then it was, like, <laughs> I don't know, I just felt, like, fucked up for a while. I and, thought, uh, I rubbed a bunch of it on my gums, and it felt so good, dude. Like, dude, if you ever do coke, I still don't, remember, like, the don't even it. snort it. Like, don't snort coke, because it sucks. Just rub it all over your mouth. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing that you should do. Like, it's like, snorting is just a waste of your brain and time, but rubbing it all over your lips and teeth, it's, like, so good. Put it on a spin brush and just rub it all over your fucking mouth. I bet it would be great. <laughs> just you brush your teeth with it every yeah. night. If you like, yeah, if you like, drink yeah. coffee and then brush your teeth with coke, like. Yeah, forget about coffee, dude. Just just put some coke on your spin brush in the morning and go to work. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's not the best. Thing but here's the thing. Uh, I okay, so like I was on the roof with my neighbors, like some people I had never really met. And they were like, yeah, we should go downstairs and smell the iPad. And I was like, yeah, fuck you. I'll go smell your guys' iPad. And I was just, like, joking. I didn't know what they were talking about. And then I got down there, and they just chopped up a whole bunch of coke on this kid's iPad. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll do some of this or whatever. And uh, I did it. But I definitely didn't hallucinate. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's just an admission. This has nothing to do with anything. But uh, I can tell you about one time that I did hallucinate. And uh, I didn't really visually hallucinate. I just uh, shifted my brain's perspective on reality and everything. And that was the time that I ate psilocybin mushrooms for the first time. I've done them three times in my life. And the first time was like the most profound, ridiculous realizations I've ever had about myself and the universe and uh, my place in it and time and space and the interactions between things. It was unbelievable, dude. Like, um, actually, John Bogaski one of two reviewers of Daddy Patio on iTunes, uh, tried to eat a quarter of mushrooms, but he couldn't eat the entire thing, so whatever was left over, which is around a half eighth, uh, I ended up eating, and I drank a little bit, and I smoked a little bit, and I thought that wouldn't work, and um, I drank a bunch of orange juice, and I was like sitting on the couch, and I was like, yeah, these things like didn't really work, nothing's really happening. And then all of a sudden, I was, like, looking at this uh, this string that was on the ground, and I saw a pair of scissors that was across the room. And just by looking at those two objects, I knew how they would interact, and I felt like I could cut it, like, with my mind. And then I saw <laughs> Dale, Emily's... I saw Dale, Emily's cat, like, <clears throat> sitting on the windowsill, and he was purring. And he was, like, looking at me, he was purring. And I could, like, feel his purring from across the room. Like, I felt, like, the vibrations he was sending out in the air. And it was, like coming to me and like touching my brain and stuff and I felt like I could just feel it like inside my head and like all through my body and stuff and he like got off the windowsill and came over to me and he was like rubbing all over my legs and stuff like that and like it felt so good it was really weird I was just like petting her cat and it felt like it felt so good and uh I walked outside and like I could feel all the grass and everything and all like the rocks and everything underneath my shoes like through the rubber in my shoes, I could just feel it, like, all over the bottom of my feet. I could feel the texture of it while I walked through, and I was just, like, dragging my feet over it and, like, looking up at the stars, and I felt like, uh, I felt like, finally, I was just not concerned with time anymore. I just felt like I understood that I was just this, like, this wild, unlikely circumstance that had amounted in this time, and I was just, like, okay with it. And that probably sounds kind of crazy, but, uh, for me, it felt like a profound realization, and it felt really good, and uh, I just felt okay with the universe and knowing that I was part of it, and I was just an expression of it. I don't know. Maybe I sound crazy now. <laughs> no, Maybe no. it's because I, think I you said, coke off my neighbors. I think you're understandable to uh, people that have had similar experiences. But I haven't had one. Yeah. So. Um, I was yeah, in the... uh, and um, also, I don't know. I, I It's like, never mind. I don't know, I don't have anything else to say about that. That's all. That's I all was, I have to say about that. I was under the same influence and uh, similar, like, thought process and, like, renewed perspective, but during mine, we uh, we went outside and we laid down and, like, looked up at the clouds and stuff, 
And uh, I looked up and I saw, like, uh, Mufasa's face in, in the clouds, <laughs> like, from The Lion King. Damn. And I was like, all right, I'm fucked up. And then I, like, looked away. And then I looked up again, like, expecting it to be gone because I, like, told my brain that I was not, like, that's not possible. And it was still there. And I was like, all right. And I looked away again, and I kept looking up, and it, like, stayed there the entire time for, like, ten minutes straight. Like, that's all I saw was Mufasa in the sky. <laughs> and it was awesome. Dude, I would say... Like, Dude, yeah. The best part of any psychedelic is, like, the day after, like, the hangover part. Like, everything's yes. so... Yeah. Yes. So renewed. Like, you're so happy. Like, music sounds It's clearer. a reverse like, hangover. Colors are so Dude, much fucking mushrooms. brighter. Yeah. Mushrooms give you a reverse hangover. I honestly believe that, because then the next day, you just look at everything like a baby. Like, I feel like what hallucinogens, hallucinogens do is, like... I feel like our brains, through evolution, are programmed to just... They, they see things and they just, uh, they summarize everything. They dismiss everything as, like, not dangerous or dangerous and should be paid attention to. And, uh, we just make everything like a pyramid where it's, like, only things that are really needing our attention are getting our attention. And then when you eat hallucinogens, it's just like a brain scramble. And then all of a sudden, like, the, these blades of grass that you ignore every day while you walk to work and, like, the birds chirping that, like, normally fades into the background and, like, the shapes of the clouds and the feeling of the sun on your skin, like all these things that you naturally are always feeling, but just dismissing yeah. as unimportant. It just turns off all the filters become, in your brain. Uh, well, yeah. well, your yeah, brain, yeah, like, they, they your brain's like programmed much, to dismiss all that uh, shit because it would like go crazy if it like took in every little detail every day. Well, and like exactly, and that's why you shouldn't be like that all the time. And and it's a it's a survival mechanism that uh, that we don't pay attention to these things all the time, but. When we can uh, escape the way we normally think just for a little bit, just a little period of time, I feel like it uh, does wonders for your consciousness. And I honestly believe that it's uh, that it's aided in the evolution of human beings to eat things like psilocybin mushrooms and, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, though. But No, no. Go no, ahead. That's 100% true. Say? Was that uh, Terrence McKenna that came up with that? Like, kind of like that, saying that, like, monkeys, like, ate, like, mushrooms or something like that, and that kind of boosted them up, like, a level one consciousness? Or yeah, something? well, the the idea behind that actually starts with, uh, because one of the first effects of psilocybin mushrooms is it increases visual acuity, and uh, that's an incredible mechanism for survival. Like, uh, you'll... It, it, if you eat mushrooms and you suddenly have better vision, you're better at surviving. Well, so because your pupils dilate these, uh, so big. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, through pupil dilation. So all all the apes that were eating mushrooms suddenly had better vision. They were eating small doses because they were following around things like uh, like cows and uh, like stock an- or um, uh, herd animals, you know, and. Uh, Mushrooms grow on the feces of herd animals, so they're following them around, trying to kill them and eat them and everything, but at the same time, they're eating the mushrooms that grow off of their shit, and uh, it's increasing their visual acuity, and then those those apes, in turn, survived longer, and uh, yeah, they just kept eating them, and the more you eat, the more you hallucinate, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not good at explaining it. You can look it up. It's Terrence McKenna. It's on uh, YouTube. He has, like, a whole speech about it. And I'm sure there are books and everything. He talks a lot about, like, uh, DMT and Andy. stuff. Dude, he would try to do, like... Uh, go ahead, Colin. Oh, Andy, were you the person who told me about the, like, person who got a magnet, like, surgically implanted in their, like, middle finger? What? I, I, I don't think so. I don't think I was the one who told you that. If I've been Tony, but someone was telling me about this person who, like... He surgically implanted a magnet into his middle finger, and um, because you have more nerve endings in your um, fingertips than you do anywhere else, he could like it gave him like a sixth sense where like he could he would know he lived in New York, so he'd know if like a, a subway was passing underneath him, he'd know like if metal was like close by because it would like <laughs> spin and like or just even slightly like move a little bit and he would feel it because. I mean, is the most sensitive part of his body. But eventually, there's a part in time where uh, the magnet broke in his um, middle finger, and it broke and just, like, moved around. <laughs> and so it got totally fucked. And then eventually all the magnet parts came back together, but it was, like, way weaker than what he had. Do you, does this sound familiar at all to you? Huh. Like, 
No. Yeah, uh, Tony actually did tell me about that. So it was Tony. It was Tony that brought that up. Okay. And uh, that's really interesting, too. Uh, and that that's something that is just, like, that's kind of crazy that this person could just implant something in their finger and then all of a sudden have another sense. And that makes me wonder, like, what other life forms must sense, like, outside of the Earth, like aliens, which must exist. <laughs> like, the way that they sense things must be totally different. And, and even life forms that are on the Earth, like... What Maybe if they were? What if they were like senses. super boring? What if they came down and they looked just like us and was like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is it." Oh, you like, see things? Fuck. You know math? Oh, they know. They, some kind of like glitch in the universe, like. <laughs> actually, like, what I was talking about before, where like their entire language is the same except for like two words are replaced. Like, oh, I just remember. Yeah, uh, wife, wife, and, wife cunt. and cunt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> those two words are just like interchanged. Dude, like, we probably can't even, but, like, uh, we can't even come up with, like, how they'd even communicate, like... we talked about this so many times. With aliens? Yeah. yeah. Dude, you can go on and on about, like, but, aliens, dude, uh, but... but back to, like, talking about hallucinogens, like, I, I honestly think that, uh, I think that what's valuable about hallucinogens is, like I said, it, it, it scrambles, uh, your, your system of prioritizing information that's coming in. And so it allows you to see things through a window that you don't normally have. And and everything that you experience becomes part of your identity. Like nature, like nature versus nurture, the whole thing. Like uh, every, all of your experiences shape your identity. So whether or not what happens while you're on hallucinogens is real doesn't matter because it's shaping your identity because your brain remembers it and it becomes part of who you are. And I, I think it's valuable to just change up what's important to you and see things from a new perspective and, uh, I, I really feel like when I ate mushrooms, I had, like, my communion with the universe, and, uh, it was excellent, <laughs> like, and I think it's a valuable thing for humans to do, and I think it's no coincidence that, uh, we evolved the way we did, and that, uh, there's just these plants out there that interact with your brain in a certain way that you just go pick. I think it is a coincidence. <laughs> Dude, that's a Dude it's not even. It. It's yeah, that was beautiful. Yeah, Dude, communion there, with the universe. There, there's not even like. You should it, play that Carl Sagan Cosmos song while you're saying all that. <laughs> yes, you should. <laughs> Dude, uh, it's not but, just like uh, drugs Carl too that do that. I mean, like and... doing crazy, like like <laughs> jumping out of a plane. That changes your perspective as well. Like freaking yeah, ab- how your body feels, like falling, free falling. Yeah, dude. There was what, a uh, books and. Well, dude, books and movies. Oh yeah. Daddy or patio your perspective just as much. Like it's. I don't know. Here's the thing about drugs being a coincidence is like all the like feelings you get from drugs are like all those chemicals are in your brain already. It's just like the drugs like will inhibit like one responder or like whatever the chemical that like makes that drug work, it'll either inhibit it so you produce more or like something else. So all those chemicals are in your brain already. Dude, which is amazing. It'll just like, like inhibit like one thing. It's like, oh, send a bunch of endorphins at once. And so that's why I think it is a coincidence. It's like someone happened to find the right plant that like makes a that's not true. endorphin. We, like THC is not in your body. You just have receptors. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dude, I mean, like, actually, I know, I which like is even psych- more psych- crazy. Drugs that's, the yeah, that's fucking to crazy, too. Like, grow or, like, neglect them and just be kind of like a piece of shit burnout <laughs> where you don't do anything except do all these hard drugs. Yeah. But, like, it gives you this huge opportunity, opportunity, like, to learn exactly what you're saying, Andy, from everything that's around us. Like, grow, like, look eternally, like, figure yeah. out what actually is going on in our own minds. It's just all about different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with... Uh, recognizing and uh actualizing yourself you know like re- recognizing your ego and and understanding and, uh i don't know i don't have i don't have a clear way of putting it but i i think something to consider is um like we were talking about dmt earlier as being one of the most powerful hallucinogens for human beings to take and uh it's like that's what's already in your body and that's what causes you to dream and that's what is released in tremendous amounts when you die. And I think it's really interesting to think about uh, the moment of death and how you will perceive your own death while you're dying, while your brain's releasing all these crazy chemicals. Especially considering, like, Lance and I jumped out of that plane and our brains just kind of thought we were going to die. Yeah. Just enough, physically, to make us feel this ridiculous euphoria. So I can't even imagine what the actual moment of death is going to be like. And... uh I think maybe it, it, it could end up being an exaggeration of uh, 
your your view on life or your your fears or whatever it is that's going on in your mind usually anyway so if you spend most of your life becoming at peace with your existence then uh, maybe the moment of death is your glorious blossom, and that's what people perceive as heaven. And if you spend your your life worried and confused and scared and never exploring or understanding anything, those things come to life in a more real way than ever in the moment of death through whatever crazy chemicals your your brain lets out, and then you're like lost in this perception of eternal hell forever. I don't know. I don't it's know. weird because like, like DMT, when you hallucinate, like. Yeah, the trip's only 15 minutes, but your perception of the trip could be eternity, you know, because the way yeah, you think so of true. it isn't the same as the time that actually passes, you know? And I feel like it's the There's same way There's been studies with, uh, on that. Dude, on DMT, <laughs> like, every time I've done DMT, like, time did not matter. It, was, it, it wasn't about how long or how, it was this going to be eternity. It was, like, what you were, like, experiencing and receiving from this one thing... And just being like slowly let down. Well, there's like a big it. theory that like says a lot of DMT is released when you die, and your perception of time in a dream is different from your perception of time when you're actually sleeping. And like they think that the afterlife is just like because you're on a bunch of DMT, and like you perceive that as like eternity. But well, there's like a bunch of studies. That yeah. Like all that but shit. hey, how about well, the I mean, afterlife like, what doesn't what exist? It's nothing. It's gone. You don't have to worry about there's it. There's no it's, evidence. What for about it? like the it's stream of consciousness? Blank. Though, like matter speaking. can't be created or destroyed. So this. Does your stream of consciousness just like continue on, or like yeah, what happens? Exactly. Your stream of consciousness isn't well, there. Right? Yeah, well, hold on. Well, let's let's like... ask this dead guy. Oh wait, you can't ask the dead guy, dude. You <laughs> don't know. The, ask the woman in the wedding dress. Let's call it that. What? Oh think, my god. Yeah. yeah. There's like That's a. For you, Lance. you know, yeah. there's just no like Carl Sagan talks about. There's. That's he doesn't say that he doesn't believe in an afterlife because of like the idea of it. He just says he doesn't believe of, of it in it because there's no scientific evidence for it. Right. Like, well, well, there could be evidence for well, it, but we just don't, we don't know how to get it. We don't what, know I, what I was kind of talking about is, like, your perception of your own afterlife. You know what I mean? Because, like, I can't say, like, because obviously I don't fucking know anything. I don't know anything at all more than anybody else does. But, like, I feel like your uh, your perception of your own death probably has a lot to do with the way you... Uh, experience it you know yeah. like well they say everybody who like has a near-death experience and stuff always says like they're at peace and like they don't want to come back and shit like that and that's just because there's so many like endorphins and shit being released whenever I you're just, like dying i just don't want to uh be burned to death or drown or yeah that would suck stabbed to death or frozen. burned and drown at the same time <laughs> your lower half is set on fire <laughs> i'd rather be away. like shot in the head die of old age get my head cut off uh, old age i don't know no, I, I kind of feel like I want to no. fly an F-16 like, into like a, a volcano. I die of old age. <laughs> Did I tell you guys this? That's, that's what I want. I die of old age, <laughs> but I get my head cut off at the same time. The very, I think the most glorious idea. death would be one like an Independence Day when he like, knows that he has to like do it. You know? He flies <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty killer. Like Wait, when you it? suddenly are given this profound purpose and you know you have to do it. And then you just go and fucking do it. And like, I bet that's, like, the greatest thing. And you know it's just going to be some crazy explosion, and it's, like, going to save the planet. Yeah, could you imagine if he, like, would have like, survived that? Like, his, the rest of his life would have just been shit. Like, that was it. That was the point. The highest point I his life could have possibly been well, at why his do you death. Think Lieutenant, why do you think Lieutenant Dan rips Forrest Gump out exactly. of bed in the middle of the night all pissed off? He was supposed to die. He was supposed to die. You, he took his destiny away from him, dude. Yep. He was supposed to die out there in the field with his men dude. with honor. And then he just had to linger on. You cheated him out of it. Cheated me out of it. <laughs> dude, it's so true. Hmm? UFT? Yeah, it's getting close to that time. All, All right. Ultimate final topic. Ultimate final topic. Dude, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate final, final to- topic here. Ultimate final topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how was the most crazy drug experience you've ever had? Crazy drug experience? Yeah, we're talking about hallucinations the entire episode. Why not? Yeah. I don't know, man. Okay, craziest drug experience you've ever had? Is that what we're doing? Yes. Do you have one crazy? You yeah, wow. Uh, well, there's a time I did double heroin in each of my pupils. Uh, <laughs> no. Andy, I really, I think that's the craziest thing yet. Wait, that actually, that never happened. What? Double heroin <laughs> in both no. pupils? If I okay. pupils. It's a new double heroin. Um, <laughs> And then I already said I have a couple of them. Like, uh, well, I, I feel like, um, 
the the one I said where I made my peace with the universe. I feel like that would be a crazy right. drug experience. Like that counts. But also like uh, there was one time when we uh, I went out into a car to smoke weed with some people. This was like when I was like probably twenty one or something, and uh, I only smoked a little bit. I had, I didn't smoke like a lot, but the windows were rolled up, and we ended up sitting in the car for like probably like an hour with these people. And, uh, I was just, I kept inhaling it like over and over. And, um, all of a sudden I just like came to and realized that I was sitting in this car and I had been for like a very long time. And I didn't know how long I'd been there or like if I had like smoked weed really or, and, uh, I just like, it was weird because I spent probably like 20 minutes just feeling my heartbeat pulse through my whole body. Like I could feel it through all my veins and every time it pulsed, I felt every color go through, like, my veins and up through my brain and everything. Like, the whole spectrum of light and color and everything I felt, like, go up through my brain and back down, like, through my blood and everything over and over again. And also, another time I had a crazy drug experience was uh, when I lived in the dorms at Webster. Someone had that awful fake weed called K2. You guys remember that? Yeah, yeah, that was, like, yeah, legal. Yeah. And, uh... I hit it twice, and I was just like, I had smoked fake weed before, and I was just like, oh, this is bullshit, it's not going to work, or whatever. So I hit it twice in this girl's dorm room, and uh, I was just, like, walking back to my room, like, kind of relaxed, and then all of a sudden, I was in the hallway, and I didn't know, like, I looked back and forth, and I couldn't remember where I was, and I was like, where the fuck am I, like, and I didn't realize where I was, and I was in a building that I lived in, like, for months, <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> recognize anything, and then I was like, why do I feel this way? And I couldn't remember why Dude, I felt that crazy. way or where I was. And then all of a sudden it was like, I couldn't remember who I was. And I was like looking at my hands and like, and I was just like, I just sat in the hallway on the ground with my hood over my head until like someone came by and asked me if I was all right. And I was just like sitting on the ground, like with my eyes closed as tight as I could. And I couldn't, I, I didn't know anything. Like I couldn't remember anything. I couldn't remember who I was, where I was why I felt that way, like, if I had done drugs, like, I couldn't even, like, speak, I was just, like, sitting on the ground with my eyes, like, clenched tight, and then, uh, someone gave me an iPhone, and I, I played Doodle Jump until I felt better. And <laughs> it reminded you <laughs> of your life. Doodle Jump brought you back. <laughs> hey, uh, what about, yeah. I remember you telling me you thought you were a ghost one time, too. Oh, yeah, um, I, uh, when I had my wisdom teeth removed, I, uh, I, like, ate a lot of those bike in or whatever, and I didn't really try to do it to, like, get high. I just, I don't know, they were just there, and I, like, took, like, two of them, and uh, I hadn't really been, like, eating a lot and stuff, and uh, I had to go, like, pick somebody up in my car, so I was, like, driving kind of fucked up on them, and, like, I felt like I couldn't remember if I was, like, real, and, like, it was weird when I was talking to people. I, like, wasn't sure that they were talking to me, and I felt like I was a ghost, and uh, we went to this hookah bar, and um, I was, like, drinking I, I drank like one beer and i was like on that and we were smoking hookah and i seriously thought i was gonna die it was a terrible idea but uh yeah i thought i was a ghost for a little while because i bike in but that was only for a couple hours it was all right it wasn't too bad it was kind of pleasurable actually <laughs> so, i mean my only like crazy drug story is that i just smoke i don't even smoke weed i like did it it's like the last time i did it and I just smoked and drank at the same time. And I ended up like throwing up on a guardrail on the side of the highway. And like, someone just drove me home. Jeez. That's all. I remember was. one time me, Finger, and Dylan were sitting on the back porch and uh, we were just smoking. And uh, we started seeing like the same things in like the clouds. Like uh, we saw like a wolf like burst out of the clouds and stuff. Like, do you see it? Oh my God, there it is! Like it was like a, it was a perfect. Like we all saw the same thing at the same like eye of the wolf and its ear and everything and. We saw, like, different things, like walruses and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like, this fucking devil face came out of the clouds. We're like, oh, my God, do you see that? Like, it, like, emerged. Out of the, and we just went inside. We're like, fuck it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> it was too much. You both saw it? All three of us. It was me, Dylan, and Fingret. Peaches, you got one? Yeah. I said the craziest drug Dude. story I had Yeah, Peaches, man. Was... You got a story. Yeah. Uh, so, me and my buddy <laughs> decided to split uh, six heads of acid a piece. And it was like... Jeez. <laughs> So, yeah, so it was three apiece, but one side was, like, slightly darker to black, and the other side was, like, slightly brown to white. And I was like, give me that black shit right there. So we split it, <laughs> and then uh, we, went, we went on throughout the night, 
And it was like it was like a typical trip, you know, we're all having a good time and we go over to our friend's house and that's when everything just got fucking crazy. Like uh, I watched myself die. I saw like my dead grandparents. I was like reborn and like as the night went on, like, I was it, it was like I'd say the end of this no, it was like the first part of January in St. Louis, like super cold. And I'm running through like Tower Grove with like no shirt on, just pants, just like laughing, enjoying, and it's like, by the end of it, we had, like, a, woke up with donuts, brain couldn't even function anymore, but it was like, no, watching, like, I don't know, like, I watched myself die, and I can't, I can't explain it, because it's not gonna make sense, and it's just gonna make me sound even more crazy, dude, but it's like, try, dude, it was like, unless it, like, brings you to a different place, that's like, no, everybody, I'll try as best as I can, dude, it was like, it was like, so emotionally, and like, visually intense, like, I couldn't actually perceive it was going on, but, uh, like, it started when, like, we were going to go out and smoke a cigarette, and then I light my cigarette, and I look up, and I see my buddy's face, and, he, like, he's got this weird, like, big grin, like, it's going from ear to ear, oh, it's just, gosh. like, I already knew something wasn't up, and then, but his backyard was, like, had this dead fallen over tree, and then, like, you had this alleyway, and then you had, like, a school behind it, but everything was very, like, just almost, like, decrepit looking. But there was this figure in a black robe just standing there. And then, like, I, I saw it and instantly was just like, that's not there. I'm going to focus towards, like, the friend group. So I turned that way, and then something brought me back to the cloaked figure where all these bats started coming in. Oh, me. my God. So I, I'm already starting sweating, and uh, thank God, what, like, my my dear friend Rebecca was just like, hey, let's, let's go upstairs. And I was like... E- couldn't even think of words. I didn't know what was going on. She takes me upstairs, and I was just like, "Ah, I'm not, I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good." And I just fall and collapse on the bed, like instantly, just start sweating. And as I'm sweating, like I just see this big vortex. This is like big dark vortex start spinning around me, and like I'm, I'm right in the middle of it. Like there's, an, there's no room around me. There's, there's no people. There's nothing. I'm just like floating down into this, and then like. This felt like it was going on for at least, like, ten minutes, but it had to have been, like, two or three. And then, like, as I hit the bottom, like, it was like, holy shit, I am nothing. I have nothing left. Like, where, like, where am I? I can't, like, kind of, like, trying to find, like, the light switch. Like, where mm-hmm. can I turn this back on? And, like, she puts her hand, like, square on my back. And I was just like, hey, you're, like, in this, like, the calmest, like, sweetest voice I think I'll, I, like, I could, it still, like, rings in my memory. It was just like... Hey, you're you're okay. You're okay. And as she did that, like I just like started like lift, like I felt myself lifting up, and just like by that point, like everything was getting brighter. Like I could actually see where I was again. I was like, oh my god, I'm sitting on this like laying on this bed, and like it had this weird floral pattern. But by that time, it looked like water. Like everything was like swirling like this very majestically and like rhythmic all around me. And then like I just kept going higher, and then like. Eventually, like, I saw, like, outside my body, and I just saw myself laying on this bed with, like, Rebecca's hand, like, on my back, and, like, I'm still going up, and then, like, by the time, like, my head physically looked up, it was, like, I saw, like, my grandma that was, like, been dead for, like, ten years, oh like, my, my grandpa that hasn't been, de- like, has been dead that I've never even met, and it was just, like, their, like, their face looking at me, it was, like, holy shit, like, and then, the, once again, I was like, where the fuck am I? I'm, like, way too high up here now. But by that time, like, uh, uh, somebody else, like, came in the room. And it was just like, okay, slowly bringing back down. But it was like, he, like, he kept asking. It was like, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? And it's just like, you can't explain to somebody what's on your mind when, like, like, the lowest low and the highest high you've ever been on has been, like, peaked out. So then we just listened to uh, a jazz musician, Sun Ra, for a while, and it's, like, very, like, soothing, like, rhythmatic, but it has, like, very upbeat and, like, can right. bring you back. We got to wrap this up. Okay. So, Dude, Ben Sanders, you have a That was awesome, story. man. No, I already told him that, man. There you go. Some All right. Plans. Well, Andy, are you still there? Uh, yes, I am. Are you ready? Hey. And, uh, Peaches, that was a, that was a beautiful thing. Dude, yeah, uh, that's thing. freaking that Dude, everybody that takes acid is always, like, like, you ask them to explain what they saw, and they're always, like, I can't, like... It's it's, it's it. unrealistic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, unrealistic. I mean, Honestly, yeah, like, even I, like 
no matter how many words you use and stuff, like you can't give us that same like experience. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, it's like I feel like yeah. it, it forces you to I, like, I, be a part of with whatever is going on, right, like, we, not to judge it. Or yeah, and I, it. I feel like words kind of uh, at some point are an injustice to some of the experiences we have as human beings, and that's a beautiful sure. thing. Yeah. All right, Andy, you ready? What uh, what yeah, song sure. are we gonna go off on? Co- uh, we'll find out later. Cosmos. We'll, we'll find out after we do this. Cosmos. Cosmos. Yeah. Sure. All right. All right. Hands down. Well, folks, thanks for joining us on this <laughs> night's uh, the twentieth episode of Daddy O Patio. We're glad you joined us on this. We're not twentieth episode of Daddy O Patio. On the Lifetime of Movie. Oh yeah, the Lifetime Original. Uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Without any further ado, Daddy O.